first I you know just want to thank everybody for coming over I know this is a uh, crazy busy time right now and a busy week uh, but you know we're excited about what we're doing we're excited about the start of basketball season and you know just wanted to welcome you guys to practice to just get a, a small glimpse of what we're doing um, you know we, we've had a successful this is day five for us and you know like any team there's good days and there's bad days but you know the best thing about this team is each and every day they come out and they compete and you know I'm learning these guys every day is something new um, that helps me as, as I play in practice of what they respond to and, and you know how they give their best so we're excited about where we're heading we're excited about you know the schedule coming out uh, we're getting closer and closer to tipping off at some point and uh, you know excited about getting back and, and playing in the BJC and playing in front of fans. We're, you know, it's still early. Like I said, it's day five. So, you know, the biggest thing for us is is making it to the season as well. Uh, we have a, a bunch of guys that love to compete, and they go after each other uh, tooth and nail every day. So, you know, sometimes I, I grit my teeth and close my eyes and, and hope it turns out well. Um, but we are, you know, we're, we're doing a great job of going after each other, competing. Um, we do have, you know, Miles Dredd won't be in practice today while you guys are there. He's dealing with something, small injury that's day to day, uh, nothing serious. But, you know, it's still early. It's day five, and we have, <clears throat> you know, a month until we play. So, you know, it's better to be safe now and get him to when we need to be 100% healthy, and that's November 10th. So, uh, just want to open it up to questions. If anybody has anything, uh, I'd love to. Love to help. Hey, Mike, I'm Mark Brennan from Lines 247. Nice to see you, and uh, welcome. Obviously, we welcomed you before. Um, but uh, how much of the kind of getting to know each other process were you able to take care of back uh, in the summer, kind of toward the end of summer when you were able to do some of those workouts? And where are you now in terms of uh, balancing that with preparing for the season? Yeah, uh, it's, a uh, you know, the summer was, was really... It was pretty hectic um, because we had, you know, a good amount of guys here, but there were guys that were still guys that we had gotten late. You know, like Jelani White, who gets here, uh, you know, the last two weeks, or you know, Giovanni Scott, they got here about halfway through the summer. So those guys, the the other crew had been there. Um, we did a lot of individual work because it gave me an opportunity to see what they can do. Right, and instead of watching on film or seeing it as an opponent, to be able to see what they do up close and personal and put them into some different situations was good. And we're still doing that. And like I said, I'm learning every day uh, what these guys do and what they do best. So we're kind of a, a balancing act. I, I think we got in a, a lot of things in, within our system, uh, which was our goal of the summer and which was our goal of the fall. I feel like we're on track. So we are on track for where we need to be um, defensively and offensively heading into the season for where we are right now, right? We still have, you know, 36 days, 37 days before we, you know, have to play a game. So uh, I feel good about where we are schematically. Uh, but we're still, it takes time. It takes time for those guys to get to know each other. And that's a big part of what we do during practice. Um, hey, Coach. I'm Spencer Ripchick from the Daily Collegian. Um, what is one of the most unique things that you added to daily practice um, that wasn't here before you came to Penn State? That's a great question. Um, considering I wasn't here before <laughs> or never saw any of their practices, but um, I don't know. We put John, you know, we let John Hare practice in a bubble, you know, so he never gets touched. That's one that I don't think anybody's ever done that before anywhere. Um, but no, it, it's, you know, we, we do a lot of different stuff. Like, you know, I, I for one, I have to be me in, in terms of uh, how I go about things and, and how I plan practices uh, and what we do. I mean, one thing that, you know, everything's new, right? We have a really old team. Right? We're one of the oldest teams in the country this year. And, but we also have, you know, all new freshmen, Considering they've never played for me, 
and they've never played in you know how I want to play and what we want to do offensively and defensively. So everything's brand new, and you know I'm encouraged by how quickly they pick everything up and by how they attack it each day with the energy that they bring. Hey, Mike, John Sauber from the Senate Daily Times. Uh, what have you seen from Jalen Pickett so far, and what do you envision his role being offensively this year? You know, it. Uh, you know, you watch video and you look at stats and you see everything, uh, but then when you get a chance, to, like I said earlier, to see what they can do up close and personal. I think Jalen is so versatile as a player um, that we'll use him in a lot of different ways. Um, he... He can really he can really pass the ball. His vision as a playmaker is something that stood out to me when I was trying to recruit him uh, because of the assist numbers that he had throughout his career so far. Uh, but you know the thing that surprised me is how well he shoots it. You know that's something that you don't know coming in that you know he makes really tough shots and you know whether they're threes, whether they're post ups, whether they're shots off the dribble. He, he can make tough shots, and that's, you know, you need the guy like that who, who can, you know, when, when the clock's running down, you need the tough basket. You know, we have a few of those guys now, uh, a few different options of guys that can make tough shots. So that's what I've been impressed with with him so far. I knew when I was talking to him, when I was recruiting him, and we were on a Zoom call, and I'm explaining something offensively, and the film's not running. You know, I'm just talking about it, and I'm not even talking about the play on the screen. And he answered my question, which was a basketball question, without have, without seeing it, just by listening and understanding. That's when I knew he was going to be special. Uh, Nate Bauer from Blue It Illustrated. Um, you mentioned John. Do, do you feel like you got the help that you needed at that position uh, for him in the offseason? Yeah, I think so. Um, John, you know, we, we want John to play as much as possible, and um, he's a big part of what we do offensively and defensively. I, I think his game has expanded um, you know, in terms of how he works, what he's done, how he's picked up everything we've done. He's really, like I said, he's really expanded his game. Um, but I think bringing some guys that aren't similar to him um, but can play the same position it gives you a few different options to play. So, you know, we'll throw a bunch of guys out there that you know, we might look at some funky different lineups, but, you know, there's a there's kind of a, a plan behind it and uh, in terms of what we want to do. So, but John, like, I need him out there, right? He, he is, like, you know, for this, not just Penn State basketball, for Penn State University, like, he is a great face of this program face of this place and this university for who he is, how hard he works, um, for, you know, everything that he stands for. So, um, you know, I needed to find it. That was one thing when I talked to him about coming back is, like, I owe everything. Everything that we're doing this year is for those guys that came back. And, you know, the guys we brought in fit with them. Uh, the guys we brought in have the same competitive spirit that he has, and that's really Mike, uh, Daniel Gallon, Penn Live. Uh, you talk about having good days, bad days. You know, when you do have a bad day on the practice court, I mean, what's kind of your approach uh, with the players? You know, going through that process. Yeah, um, you know, it's about a big key for us, or a big uh, mantra for us is is team first and improve daily. Right? You're not always going to have great days, uh, but if you come in with that attitude of, you know, being about the team. Right, everything we do is about the team first. But getting better each day, like it's easier to get better each day when you don't have a good day. Right, the next day is going to obviously be better. I hope. Like we can't be going backwards. Uh, so, you know, I can't get frustrated with them because they're they're learning. Right, it, it's like, you know, I'm a teacher and I'm teaching kindergarten, and you know, they can't pick it up from day to day. Not to say these guys are kindergartners; they're not picking things up, but. Like the retention of what they do, I'm asking a lot of them, right? So I can't get frustrated, I can't get upset. You know, I have to find the best way to reach them. And I think if you, any teacher in America, would say the same thing about their students, like, what's the best way that they learn, and then let's do that to help them. So, 
you know, I change things all the time. I think about it, I tinker it, and find what works best. And even throughout practice, we were having a great day yesterday. And we took a water break, and there was something we were going to move to next, and I was like, we got to scrap it. Because I don't want to teach right now and have them lose the edge that they're playing with. So let's keep that energy high. Let's keep that stuff going. So, you know, it's all new for me as well. Um, but, you know, from practice to practice, from minute to minute, like we're changing, we're constantly, you know, adapting and evolving. Like, you know, one thing is I'm not scared to try new things. Um, I'm not scared to shake things up. So we'll do it when we need to. Hey, Mike. My name is Will Pegler. I'm from Ronald State. Nice to uh, meet you in person. Um, just wondering, kind of, as you as you learn this team, even you know you're only five days in a pre in a real practice. Um, how key is it for you to kind of work with and learn from veteran guys like John, Miles, Dread, um, even Seth Lundy at this point? It's great. Like, you know, those guys are helpful because they know the Big Ten as well. Uh, the guys that have been here, they they understand what we're walking into, and they're helping the the new guys uh, kind of understand what it takes. Uh, but some of the new guys have like really pushed the envelope with how hard they work, and you know we've done a lot of things this fall. We've we've done a lot, you know, in the weight room, conditioning wise, and uh, those guys are leading the charge as well. And you know, for as great of a competitor as John is, and how hard he works, like Greg Lee's right there next to him. Um, Seth Lundy has had a great off season and has really pushed himself to the max to be a good player. So like. To have guys like that leading the charge, whether it's old guys, new guys, whatever, uh, they're coming together. They're pushing each other. Um, it's good to have guys that have been in the Big Ten that understand, like what it takes to go win at Michigan State. Right? What it? It's different when you have to go there. It's different when you have to go on the road to Wisconsin and play. Uh, but they've they've done it. They've been there. They've seen it. All right. So I'm not the only one. You know, touting that message. We have other guys that can do it and lead in that way as well. Coach Andrew Clay, WTHA. Have you seen any specific examples of where your NBA, uh, where your NBA coaching background is, makes changes the way you do things? Maybe to compare and send to other coaches. Um, you know what? It, it's you know, there's a lot of different ways to to do things and have success, right? Like I don't think. Um, there's one way of doing it. Like we, we didn't, we didn't practice long when I was at Butler, right? We Brad Stevens was quick and uh, he was in and out in terms of how we practice, how quick we move from drill to drill, and we got off the floor. You know, when I went to Purdue, we're practicing for three hours every day. Didn't matter. Like we're out there, and, and you know, but both guys have had a lot of success. So there's no one way to do it. I think. Um, how we try and do things here, you know, there's a huge emphasis on player development, which is, you know, what we did in the NBA and, and what, you know, I kind of tried to bring with us here. Uh, so we spend a lot of time doing that, even throughout practice time, uh, taking time to grow guys individually. Because if you're getting better individually, you're getting, our team's getting better at the same time. So that part of it, I try and keep practices short. Uh, so we go short bursts of, Hard intensity, um, hard competition for a short amount of time. You know, that kind of simulates the the shorter stints, you know, with media timeouts and things like that. So um, it's a mix. It's a mix. I, I spend a lot of time talking to Greg McSkinnis about, you know, where we are and as players, their readiness before practice and how they judge each practice based on how they feel. So. That's a you know a thing from the NBA of how do I adjust the next day's practice based on how these guys feel because you know it's not important to have them ready on October fifth or sixth right they need to be ready on November tenth and then they need to start peaking then we don't need to start peaking that November tenth. Hey coach uh, Seth Engel Daily Collegian. Um, obviously, a lot of adversity that comes with joining a program for the first year. I'm wondering, how do you build a unique culture from the ground up? You try and um, take the things that, you know, like I said, directly lead to winning. Right? That's that's been the most important things on my mind from the day that I got here. Uh, like, what what directly leads to winning? 
and let's focus on that first. You know, I'm, I'm not a huge, um, I'm not a huge slogans guy, right? I'm not a huge guy about visuals and graphics and things like that. Like, it's not important to me, right? That it doesn't help you win all the time. Like some people have had a lot of success with it. I'm not knocking any of that, but like for me in my program, like I have to find out what it is that that makes us work and like what championship basketball is all about, um, and then mixing that in with the players that we have here. Um, I think the culture that the guys that we have and and what you can build off of is you know you have a guy like John, you have a guy like Seth, Miles, Sam. Um, even the young guys, Dalian and Caleb, who didn't get as much of an opportunity last year, but they were around here. Like the competition level and how hard they go has been ingrained in them. Like, like, like caps off to, to what they've done before here because that's something that you can build off of. To win in this league, you have to play as hard as possible. And that's something that we're, we're able to build off of right now. But now it's the details of everything. Like I'm, I'm a stickler for details. Uh, I'm a stickler for how we do things, fundamentals. Uh, so trying to build it in that way, and then it's team, 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 everything. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really focus on our team and how we're making each other better. You know, how we're serving others. You know, instead of thinking about myself all the time. As much team as we can do, that's what we're gonna push. That's what we're gonna strive for. And I think that's when you start to build a championship culture. Sorry about that. Hey, my guy, uh, David Eckert, Blue Light Illustrated, talk to you. Um, you mentioned a minute ago that you know player development is really important to you. So I'm just wondering how you're approaching that. If maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Thanks. We spend a lot of time, and, and we didn't do it, you know, as much individual um, as I would like to, just based on time. And there's you know there was a lot to really put in um, and get in in the summer and the fall, but. You know, these guys worked in small groups, you know, usually groups of two, um, you know, for 40 minute segments this summer. And it's like kind of personalized uh, plans for what they needed to do to get better. And, you know, sometimes you were with a guy that was similar to you, but, you know, as we move into the future of our program, it's it's one on one. So you and I are out there. It's it's me and you. We have a plan. We got a couple managers that can help us rebound. but. We work on the things that are specific to you getting better, and that's important. And it's also important for, you know, their growth after here, right? I have some ideas of what it takes for these guys to reach the next level. Right? I've, I've seen it. I've been there. I've seen the best. Um, I've also seen guys in college get to that point. So it's not just me coaching, you know, now Horford, who was a 10-year pro before I got there, right? It's, it's about, you know, working with a Gordon Hayward from 18 years old until he was the ninth pick in the draft, you know, things like that. So understanding that, understanding what it takes to not be an NBA superstar, make the league, right? Not just make the league, thrive in the league, you know, survive in the league. Now, you know, some guys are surviving in the league. Tim Frazier, how does he survive in the league and he's still there? You know, those are messages that I can give those guys about what it takes, but that's a lot of what we do individually. Like I said, here's how you can make it. Here's how I'm going to help you make it. Um, you got to buy into the team, right? There's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do, but we can help your game as you grow and get better. And, you know, let's try and reach your goals. Like I tell all these guys, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to help you reach your goals, and we'll do it together. And, you know, that's the fun part of basketball. That's the fun part of developing guys. That's the fun part of growing. And, you know, it's a fun part of being part of this program. Last two. Hey, Micah. Right? Holy crap. Um, ben Jones, TakeCollege.com. How's it going? Great. Um, your leadership style, you talked about being a, a stickler for the details. What is sort of the balance for you between letting different guys on your staff do their job and sort of having your hand in those pots? And also, has there been a moment where you've gone, I'm not an assistant coach anymore from the management and everything under your umbrella standpoint? Yeah. It, it um, when we, so we tried to break it up in our, so if you would go back to the fall and the summer, we went, uh, so our four hours a week were three 40 minute individual sessions and then a two hour team session. So all of those individual sessions were assistant coaches. 
Like I didn't, I didn't say a word during those. Um, I let those guys do it. I let their voice be heard. I let them kind of find their way um, in terms of, you know, how they wanted to coach each guy individually and build those relationships with the guys as well. And then I did a lot of the team stuff um, because our, you know, our staff, you know, the staff is new to me as well, right? None of us have ever worked with each other except Coach Collins and I. And that was a long time ago, um, but. You know, so I try to delegate as much as possible. Um, I'm not a I'm not a guy that that likes to look over their shoulder. I want to give those guys freedom, right? They're good coaches. Uh, that's why they're here. Uh, but I want to give them freedom to grow and to learn and to find the best way that they can, you know, help our team. Uh, so, you know, I'm all about hiring good people and letting them work, and that's what I try and do with with the guys on our staff is. You know, I know they're great coaches. I know that they can work. I know they have great ideas. So I allow them a lot of freedom to bring those ideas to the table. Um, I forget your other question. I was rambling about that. Uh, just like the first moment when you were like, I'm not an assistant coach anymore from the management and daily tasks. And yeah. Um, <laughs> March 21st. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. There, there's so much, like, you know, the, the practice times, they didn't seem different. That That's, you know, being at Purdue really helped me. Um, Coach Painter gave me a lot of freedom. And there were times when whenever he left and went on the road recruiting, he's like, hey, you got it. You run the whole thing. Come up with it. You know, do it. Like that, that helped me grow right there um, as a coach. So it didn't seem new. Um, it didn't seem different. I was just kind of doing what I've always done. And trying to help in the best way possible. And I'm learning to delegate. I'm getting better at it. But like I said, I have great guys by my side that um, do an awesome job of, of helping our team grow. And uh, I'm happy that I have those guys with me. Final question. Hey, Coach, Zach Gershman in the game. Considering Ishan Jagiazzi's past career, what have growth have you seen from him both on a personal scale and on athletic scale over the past couple of weeks? He is... Um, like he's one of the like I don't know how to how to say this. I don't know how you guys will write this. He's one of the dopest dudes I've ever been around in my life, man. Like his whole like his whole swag is different. Right? He is a he's a Pokemon champion that is our best recruiter. <laughs> he can have conversations with, with a, a parent or a kid and there's no difference between it. And each of our guys, all of our guys love him. They love him. We love him as a staff. Like he is, like I said, he's just a great individual. Um, so, you know, he, he brings something unique to the table. And like everybody does. Like you find your role and find your niche and then like be a star in your role. So he's still trying to figure out what that is. But in the meantime, like I said, he's been our best recruiter. Like you, you bring a kid – on campus and, and let them like sit in the locker room with Eshawn or sit at the tailgate with Eshawn and talk, like, that kid's going to be ready to, to, to come to Penn State. Like That dad's going to be ready to come to Penn State too. So, um, you know, I'm thrilled that he's here. Uh, he, he's an awesome kid. And uh, I don't know much about Pokemon. Coach, Coach Mike Green talks about it all the time. But uh, Eshawn and I will get into it at some point in time. I'm sure he's got some, like, uh, special like kind of Pokemon cards and stuff that nobody else in the world has so uh, we'll figure it out we'll get them out on the table play some games and stuff awesome thanks coach thank you guys thanks for coming